Welcome to the Lights, Camera, Rant Podcast. Your source for the latest on movies, TV shows, and video games. Get ready for ranting, raving, and reviewing. Here is your host, Lee. Hi, welcome back to another edition of Lights, Camera, Rant. Well, we look into the latest news and then we get into the reviews, which for this particular episode, we're going to be looking at the latest episode of She-Hulk and the brand new Amazon Prime movie called Samaritan, starring Sylvester Sloan. And as you guys know, before we get into anything, I got to do one thing first, which is crack. Yeah, that's the shit. I don't encourage drinking. By all means, I don't. But if you're listening to this podcast in the afternoon and you're not driving, then please go right ahead. But if you're driving and listening to this in the morning, don't drink. Don't at all. <laughs> um, so, guys, as always, thank you very much for tuning in for another episode. And if you haven't already, please go check out last week's episode. I had Mark My Words. Well, I had Mark from Mark My Words come and join me for an episode where we took a look at the state of the video game industry at this moment, which seems like the current landscape, the biggest word of, of the day is delay, delay, delay. But we go into such great detail about that to keep you guys up to date and make sure you guys know what games you're anticipating are most likely going to be delayed. <clears throat> Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, I'm Hogwarts Legacy, Midnight Suns, the list goes on and on. But look, please go check it out. It was a great episode and it was a lot of fun. So with that out of the way, let's look at like what's happened in the past week, which if anyone's following me on Instagram, I cannot, oh, you would have seen my rant. Uh, you would see on Instagram, you would see on TikTok, you would have seen it on uh, Facebook as well. Oh, just Warner Brothers have put out a statement, the fact that the DC fandom convention for this year has been cancelled. Now, we, I would say we kind of knew this was going to happen, but we were hoping it wouldn't be. We're kind of, for DC fans, we were kind of hoping the fact that, you know, with all these monks, all these cancellations, this was where we we're going to get these big announcements. You know, we we're going to get, here's the concept art for Batman 2. You know, what's coming, you know, Batgirl, some statement about that. A new trailer for Aquaman. Uh, a new trailer for The Flash. You know, like, you know, Warner Brothers coming in and going, you know, with everything going on, look, we want to make sure the fact that, look, this is what we're going to install. Don't worry, we are doing a course correction. But... Uh, that's not the case. That's been fully cancelled. It's just, like, I understand that they're, they're shuffling everything around and everything could be quite a mess at this stage, which, which we all know. But come on. Like, seriously, guys. Like, it was you telling me there is nothing you could announce. There was nothing in the pipeline that you could at least said, oh, we're doing this. Or even if the fact you had no announcement, at least have a convention on, you know, to reassure fans, get everyone together, build that community again. No, not at all. Which is, look, as I said in my rant, another nail in the coffin. Which is kind of sad. But, look, we knew it was, yeah, look, right now, anything that Warner Brothers does is not shocking anymore. This was just, as soon as I saw the announcement, I was just like, oh my God. You can't have, if you're a DC fan, you can't have nice things. But you know what? I've said it previous and multiple times on this podcast. The thing that always brings me back is the fact that in January, they were doing this promo called uh, 2022, the year of DC. And I even said it in my very first episode of the year. This could be the very, very strongest year that you have ever seen of DC. And they are swinging for the fences right through the very top. But because, mm, you know, at the very start, we were meant to get the Batman. Uh, we were meant to get the Flash. We got Aquaman. We had Shazam all on the table. And then I think Feb was for uh, Aquaman. That was everything we were meant to get. 
Wow, how and uh, actually, no, and Batgirl. We want me to get Batgirl at the very end as well, which you know, I wasn't overly excited, but I was excited to a point because I had Michael Keaton. But uh, yeah, that uh, that call just kind of like twiddled away, went to nothing, um, which is kind of gut wrenching. But uh, look, it is what it is. But look, for any DC fans, I feel you. Yeah, currently, right now, the landscape is just just gut wrenching, uh, and this entire merger just doesn't seem to be going very well or well well the thing is it's not i'm not saying it's not going very well it's the fact that everything's being pushed cancelled left right and center and it's not leaving us with much hope you know right now we have um black adam coming up which you know to us it, it could go either way i really hope it's good for dc but just from the trailers that were shown i'm just kind of like mm, yeah look I'm, i'll watch it that's I'll watch it, but like twenty bucks is the fact that it will not be as good as Top Gun. Thirty bucks is the fact that it will not be as good as Black Panther Two or Avatar. So I'm happy to take your money right now. But that is probably one of the biggest things that happened this past week. That uh, yeah, I had to I had to run, I had to get off my chest. But. If you look at the flip side, flip side of the fence, uh, apparently that Warner Brothers has also trademarked Big Chungus. So everyone who is really into memes, you would see it's the really big, uh, fat Bugs Bunny called Big Chungus. Apparently Warner Brothers has trademarked that to get ready for the multiverse game that's out right now. That's actually doing really well. Um, the amount of players that are on it right now, I guess, because the fact that you know you can have Batman, Scooby Doo, you got Rick and Morty all across the board, it is doing fantastic, and they're gonna be adding Big Chungus. So, for any Big Chungus fans, you're in store for this. Um, so get ready for that. Uh, also, still Warner Brothers Harley Quinn season four has been greenlit. I have only watched up to season two, so I need to catch up in the season three. But everyone I speak to loves Harley Quinn and loves this TV show. And, I'm, and I love the first two seasons. I think the show is hilarious and I need to catch up. But for any fans, you're in store. Season four has been greenlit. Uh, also, now let's talk about another TV series, the Twisted Metal TV show uh, starring Anthony Mackie. That has wrapped up filming, and that's going to be streaming next year on Peacock. For Australian fans, I don't know what our equivalent is. I don't think we have access to Peacock. Don't quote me on that. I think it's the uh, same thing with HBO Max. Like We have the back end, which is called Binge. But yeah, I don't yeah, I don't know what it's gonna mean for us. I'm sure we'll find it anyway. In this day and age, it's always something. It'd be great if it was streaming on Disney Plus. That would be fantastic. But um, to wrap up filming, uh, they all got ice cream out of uh, Sweet Tooth's uh, ice cream truck to wrap up filming as the it's all done. So this will be PlayStation's second adventure coming out into film and TV. So obviously being very first, being the Uncharted movie, this is their second adventure that you will see very close. At this stage, which I did mention last week, there is a Gran Turismo movie in the works. There is a uh, Z uh, Horizon Zero Dawn TV show that's in the works. And there's also a Days Gone movie that apparently is also in the works as well. So that's three properties we know. And uh, I've got to mention Ghost of Tsushima as well. That's, so that's four properties we know that are currently in active development. Uh, a Ghost of Tsushima would be a fantastic. I cannot wait. Just that on the big screen will look, if done proper, will look uh, stunning. And they will really have to capture that from the game and all the aspects. Uh, so I... I honestly can't wait for that. And yeah, just a twisted metal. I'm really curious how that's going to be portrayed. Like for anyone who hasn't played Twisted Metal, it's an old arcade game that you can get on the PlayStation 3. You still can get Twisted Metal Black and the new Twisted Metal, I do believe. But it's a game, it was one of those arcade games. You get in a car, you got weapons, you shoot everybody, and you try and win survival, battle, all that fun stuff. Uh, but the trick was the fact that the old stories behind all the characters was so like messed up, you know, it's like it would, horrific psychotic backgrounds you'd have on these characters that make them so twisted. 
uh, you know, killer clowns, killer this, you know, bloody this. Like it was just dark. But the fact is, I remember playing the old PlayStation game, and you could you could break anything, you could blow up the Eiffel Tower, you could, you know, all these crazy weapons and trying to destroy each other. It was an awesome game, and Twisted Metal Black was such a benchmark game when that came out. And not to mention, uh, the new Twisted Metal was good, but I really am clamoring a brand new Twisted Metal PlayStation Five. That is long overdue because the last Twisted Metal game came on PlayStation 3. So it's kind of right now two generations behind. And it's a complete staple of uh, PlayStation's uh, catalog of traditional games like Crash Bandicoot. Eh, But a little bit more for mature audiences. But uh, yeah, that's all wrapped up as well. And speaking on video games, for anyone who was a Mafia fan uh the uh developers have announced the fact a new mafia game is in development this will be mafia 5 after mafia 4 which was a great game loved it and just recently oh a couple of months ago probably they just they released the remastered versions of mafia 1 mafia 2 and did their basically the um trilogy pack oh sorry mafia 1 2 3 and 4 so number 4 is currently in the works uh, they just recently released the trilogy pack that you can go buy on PlayStation and Xbox. Um, so they, yeah, they turned out pretty good. Um, I played uh, number two, uh, played number three. I haven't played number one, but number one, they didn't just uh, just do a HD touch up. They actually had to rebuild that game up from scratch because of the fact the giant leap for that being on PlayStation to all play PlayStation 2 all the way up to here. So they had to really rebuild that one. I think uh Mafia 2, they didn't have to touch a lot in. But if you haven't, Mafia 3, great game, great extent, everything you can get. The story is outstanding. I've actually gone back and replayed it twice. It's that good. So highly recommend it. Also, still speaking of uh <laughs> still speaking of video games, uh unfortunately absolutely devastating you're gonna hate this uh unfortunately hogwarts legacy now there is gonna be so much that you can do in this game there is so much open world spells and good and evil all this fortunately you cannot play quidditch i don't know why but they've announced that yes you cannot play quidditch in the game which to me like i'm not completely bummed but i'm like you think that would be a mini game at least, like not a whole like tournament or full everything, but you know, you could at least, uh, at least as a mini game. But and then again, I was talking to uh, a mate just the other day, and I have no doubt that there's going to be a shit ton of DLC for this game. This game is going to be for a while, like you know, everything coming up. I have no doubt that they'll do some Harry Potter tie-in DLC kind of stuff. I fully predict that. But uh, yeah, you cannot play Quidditch. At all the game, I am so sorry. Also, now this was a little bit gut wrenching for everyone who would, you know, really want to play this. But three four three industries have announced that they have they will no longer be in active development of the split screen campaign they originally announced that was going to be for Halo Infinite. Now that's kind of, that's very gut wrenching for a lot of people. I've seen, oh, I've seen the comments, and yeah. Yeah, and no one's really happy about this, and they've told they're going to be focusing more on the online and live services, which I'm like, to my mind, I'm like, that's exactly what happened with Halo 5, and look what happened. Well, that Halo 5 had no multiplayer at all, so that was just, that just went down one like a lead balloon, and then like, I don't understand why you wouldn't focus on this to a degree, because you know that's what, one of the things that made Halo 1, 2, 3, and 4 arguably four, but one, two, and three at least, that was fantastic. You got it made over and you got it made over and you started uh, playing Halo and you could do through the entire thing. It was so much fun. Uh, I went, my mate Dean, we did that multiple Saturdays in a row. You know, we got a few drinks and we played music and we just 100% just try to get through Halo as best we could. Man, I'm dying. But, you know, we went back and did all that. But Obviously, you couldn't do that with Halo 5, and you couldn't do that in, you know, right now, definitely not with Halo 6. So, yeah, I've, a lot of people are really disappointed that, 
and uh, that's that's not looking good. Um, also, um, another big thing that's another big thing that uh, only came out yesterday, which is kind of slap in the face, slap in the face with a fish. Actually, uh, the Aquaman star that plays uh, Manta was it Manta? Oh, Try Mary's name. Uh, Black yeah, Black Manta. Uh, the actor. I'm going to butcher his name straight up. A yay yay a why yay um i probably butchered it so sorry sir but yeah i've just completely butchered your name but uh he just said an interview with a uh, vulture magazine saying the fact that working on ackerman is doing clown work and i saw the comment and i thought why would you say that why would you he's like it's like clown work you know you're not working on like it's you know a chicago uh cop show kind of thing like he's like we're not doing that but I'm like very much this could be taken fully out of context because you know you, you know because of the fact there's a full interview for it but you know something like that that's dc doesn't need that right now warner brothers doesn't need that right now not to mention you're alienating so many people because so many people get a fan to that because you know so many people put so much heart and work into these movies even jason moa you just turn around and go it's clown work this isn't like real work, it's clown work. I'm like, well, mate, then obviously you're just doing it for the paycheck. So that's another, with everything with Amber Heard, look, it seems to be another thing that's not probably going good for Aquaman. Nothing is going good for DC at the moment. Nothing's, uh, yeah, nothing's really going for DC at the moment at all, which is really sad. But let's look, let's jump over the fence. Uh, another thing with, uh, House of the Dragon. So a couple of, so that's obviously just been released and the first two episodes that reached 10.2 million viewership to watch that show. That is insane. That many people watching this show. I, I, I predicted that, that the show might suffer because the ending of Game of Thrones, see, uh, was received so badly, so I uh, I was a bit iffy about it. But that viewership, the how good the first two episodes. Haven't watched it, but uh, I uh, will. I need to watch Game of Thrones first. I uh, haven't watched Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah, yell at me, yell at me. But uh, you know that's that's an astounding uh, viewership. To put that in perspective, She Hulk episode one had one million people watching it. Chaos of the Dragon has had 10.2 million. You know, the fact that this show is hitting so many aspects of the uh, the casual viewer, you know, on you know, HBO Max and Binge and promotional materials everywhere, the fact it's, you know, that's how good of it is. So I tip my hat off to the fact that it's kept, you know, those, fam- those people clamoring for more. It's going to be very interesting to see uh, which I was saying this to Mark last week, is how many seasons this is going to do and how close is that when this season finishes, will it be close to Game of Thrones? So that's a big thing. But uh, from all the promo material I've seen, all the bits and pieces, the CGI looks fantastic. And it was going to be, it was going to be the most expensive show so, so far. However, Amazon Prime's The Lord of the Rings TV show, The Rings of Power, has just also dropped as well. Uh, that's doing a weekly thing, just like HBO Max, um, and just you know, bit by bit. And that's just dropped as well, and that's been called a cinematic masterpiece. Everyone's loving it. I have not heard one negative thing through all the channels that I do see. Everyone's loving it, um, and it's on an epic scale. So, yeah, Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, is the single most expensive TV show ever brought out to a streaming service. That's just, and for, again, from all the promo material, everything I've seen, it looks like the movies. But uh, that, again, everyone loves it. Have not heard one thing negative about it at all. So all to it. It was very interesting to see how these two shoes, these two bohemian TV shows, will progress as more episodes drop because these two shows are the most anticipated shows of 2022. So it's going to be interesting to see how they're going to, the viewership, you know, the quality, both going neck and neck at the moment right now. Uh, so, 
You guys tell me, what are you enjoying more so far? Uh, just with a few episodes that have been dropped, like, are you enjoying House of the Dragon more or are you enjoying Lord of the Rings? Which wh- is your heart more into it? Uh, but again, let's move. Let's keep moving on. Uh, Henry Cavill have, apparently has been, uh, rumor is he will have an undisclosed role in Loki Season 2. Apparently, Kevin Feige has been trying to get Henry Cavill for a while into the MCU. There is a plethora of characters he could play and his star power. You know, and, and not to mention the fact, well, Kevin Feige's argument was, look, Warner Brothers doesn't want you. We'll take you. Don't you worry. Even if you're in one movie, you will appear guaranteed with the next two or three years from that movie or TV show. Not nearly 10 years later let that sink in let that sink in but yeah not nearly 10 years later god so i was very excited for the fact that if this is true henry cavill is going to be in loki season two the only thing i hope is the fact that he is not in just this season and one and gone he's actually a character that you're going to see more of and actually bleed into the movies as well that would be fantastic um i think it was the captain britain i think was one of the characters obviously because he's british but you know uh that was one of the characters that always got rumored for him but uh apparently leading into into uh d23 there's a whole rumor there's about 10 new actors uh that will be joining the mcu uh very shortly uh, these people have not been in obviously anything previously for Marvel, uh, but these are all 10 fresh actors joining in the MCU. And one of them could be Penn, uh, Penn uh, Badigley, uh, who's from the Netflix TV show You. Apparently, he's also in talks to play Mr. Fantastic. I saw a lot of people come in and be like, oh, why isn't it John Kaczynski? Why isn't he reprising the role? Guys, it was a different universe there's different variants you know this was a special cameo of course he's not going to be playing mr fantastic moving forward not to mention they want a young fantastic fantastic four team uh they i'm not saying john's old but you know what i mean they, they want someone younger they want younger people to be because it's going to be the new as is marvel comics it's the first family of the mc of marvel so, but apparently, yes, he is in talks to play Mr. Fantastic. Very curious to see uh, how they're betrayed. And me, when I saw that, I was like, oh, cool. But then I was like, hang on, what about the rest of the three? Who's going to play the rest of the team? So there was a rumor going around that the Fantastic Four t- cast will be announced at D23. Look, I look, I do hope it does, but I, at the same time, I'm like, I don't think it will. I think it's probably still too early for them to announce it. Concept art? Yeah. Anything else? Maybe not. Uh, but moving on, uh, that's, yeah, so he's been playing it. Oh, sorry, last thing. So uh, I finally watched all of Daredevil. I watched all Daredevil. I binged the last three seasons. I finished it this past Tuesday. Uh, and deep breath. Loved it. I loved Daredevil. I don't know why I didn't watch it sooner, but after all three seasons, the action, the writing, the greenness, loved it. And uh, Charlie Cox as uh, Daredevil, fantastic. Um, and uh, Kingpin, fant- uh, Vincent D'Onofrio, fantastic. Loved it all the way through. And I was just gutted when I got to the end, which, spoiler alert, okay, we're also going to get into reviews, spoilers right now, so you cannot turn around and go to me and go like, "Oh, you didn't give me enough warning." You know, don't be like that guy. Spoilers, 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 left, right, and center. Spoilers. Um, I'm just yeah, I'm just gutted the fact that right at the end of season three, you we, we won't get bullseye, but that won't happen. However, with Marvel's obviously d- new Daredevil TV show, that could very well happen. Eighteen episodes that we're getting for the Daredevil that's going to be coming out. So. I, I'm so excited for it. I'm glad I've watched, yes, a lot of people are like, why watching Daredevil? Like, it's such an old show. I'm glad I've watched all of that now to get ready for She-Hulk when uh, Daredevil does appear. 
For all we know, he will only appear for one episode. I could see him appearing for one, then appearing at the end to help out, maybe join the superhero law firm. But I could see that happening. So I'm glad I've watched that. Caught up all the date. You know, watched No Way Home. So set, primed, dead over. And if you haven't watched it already, and trust me, this is not the glossy Marvel that a lot of people say. This is gritty. It is dark. It is very in line with the comics. Um, the only crime, the only thing I was a little bit disappointed was the fact that uh, you only saw him in the red suit in season two, that he wasn't in the red suit season three. I do like his black suit uh, with the bandana over his eyes. Don't get me wrong. Loved it. But I just kind of wish at the end he he would put the um, the red suit back on. Out of all three seasons, I have to say the second one is my favorite. Um, but I do like the fact that at the end of season three, uh, you finally get the big showdown that everything's building up to with between him and Wilson Fisk. Uh, and you know, seeing uh, Vincent Dorovi come back as Kingpin in the world of the MCU, that's going to be so good, uh, honestly. And it's interesting because the season one dropped a lot of hints that this takes place after 2012, what happened with the Avengers. Um, but that, you know, all the Avengers do get name dropped here and there. But after season one, season two, and season three, they don't mention it. Then it moves on to mentioning Jessica Jones, uh, which I. I started watching Jessica Jones first, and now I'm like, why don't I watch Daredevil? <laughs> Silly me. Should have just watched that instead. But all caught up. Love Daredevil. Everyone who told me to watch it, you're right. Loved it. Out of a shadow of a doubt. Bloody fantastic. So that is one of my high recommendations if you're looking for a semi-new show to watch. Uh, but let's flip over to the reviews, guys. As I said, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. So, the last latest episode of She-Hulk. Uh, so, I have to straight away, I'm going to say this. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <clears throat> so, I'm going to say it's keeping the quality. For anyone who's worried, the content, the quality of the show is continuing on. I found that episode three was still just as good as episode one and two. It did not dip higher and lower. However, I'm going to mention this right now because a lot of people are complaining about it and a lot of people are like, I don't know why it's happened. This is such a low point for Marvel. Why would they do that? Um, oh, my God. That just reminds me of the characters from uh, um, Big Mouth. <laughs> so, flip right to the end real quick. So, uh, she-Hulk does a twerking with Megan the Stallion. There's a whole twerking bit, and the internet basically lost its own, its mind, saying, "Oh, why is She-Hulk twerking? This is such a low point for Marvel." You know, just three to two and a half years ago, we got Endgame, and then this is how it's going. I'm like, I'm gonna say straight, up, shut up, shut up. It is not that bad. It is in line with the character that should be twerking. Yeah, it is nothing. It didn't take me out. It wasn't cringe. I was just laughing at it when I saw it. I was like, yeah, that's her character. Oh, no, she's doing something that, that's in line with her character. God forbid. And if you're really going around going, oh, this is a low point for Marvel, well, obviously, if you draw back your mind into the Marvel comics, there's literally a comic where... Uh, she's skip roping naked and laughing about it. So that's also a Marvel comic. So kind of still stays in line with everything. But for anyone who doesn't really like it and is complaining and you're a grown-ass man, then I feel really sorry for you and you're just a little bitch. <laughs> Straight up, like it's it's not that bad. Like I, the thing is, you've got to remember that Marvel caters for everybody. You might not like She-Hulk, but you love Moon Knight. You might not like Moon Knight, but you like Miss Marvel. You might like Miss Marvel, but you don't like uh, Loki. Or if you really like Loki, you might not like Captain Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So it caters for everybody. Marvel's not telling you, you have to watch this. You have to watch She-Hulk twerking, you know, and you have to like it. The Marvel's not telling you that. You know, it's a TV show. If you really want just to stick to the Marvel movies, you can. There's no one who's telling you you have to. You 
after the TV show comes out, go to YouTube, go to a look at a recap video, which even Marvel does it on Disney Plus. They do a recall of Marvel Legends. They do a recap of the character to get you ready for the next thing they appear in. So if you don't like it, it's not the end of the world. For me, I just watched it. I was like, okay, she's twerking. It's, it's funny. You know, it's not the end of the world. I just can't believe the internet went nuts about this. Like, calm your F down, especially when I've seen people's comments. And it just, it angries the blood. Yeah, you know, I feel like I'm 70 years old. I'm looking at it, it just angries the blood. I'm like, just get over it, honestly. Yeah, but I've said my piece. Let's get out of that. So from when the show starts, it's continuing on with uh, the Kirk Hall case uh, with Abomination. Uh, we get a lot of back and forth between her and Abomination uh, as the episode progresses, showing that he's really reformed and he just wants to be free and live a normal life. In this interrogation room that's in, you do get to see his eight uh, pen pals. Very cultish, very like... Uh, um, very like, yeah, cult. So cult's probably the best word, but, uh, you know, they're all waving him and going, oh, look at you. Uh, so he's definitely, you know, he definitely looks like he's trying to reform. Uh, we do get of him turning into abomination um, and just showing that he's got full control. Everyone gets really scared in the room, but I'm like, I don't know why I've got that scared because he's, he's contained in this cell. So it's not, so everyone's like freaking out, like he's about to break through, like he's raging, but he, he's just gone in, in abomination. And, you know, She-Hulk's just like, yeah, it's you know, change, change now, change now. Um, but it's, it's, yeah, it's not that bad. I don't know why everyone was screaming that much. Obviously, the pen pals were fine. Uh, but, you know, he definitely, in the end of this episode, he definitely gets his uh, parole and he's get to, he gets to live among everybody else. Now, I don't think that's going to be the very end we see of, of Abomination. I have no doubt he will come towards the end of the season because Tim Roth, who plays Abomination, said in an interview that he does have a scene between him and Mark Ruffalo. Now, we didn't see, uh, we didn't see Hulk in this episode. This was all just She-Hulk and the courtroom and Abomination. Uh, in this particular episode. There was also a side story between uh, an old colleague that she used to work with, uh, which his name was Dennis, uh, who <laughs> who gets tricked uh, in, by a shape-shifting elf from New Asgard, believing that she's Megan the Stallion. And he wants to sue her for all this money because he paid all this, and he got fully tricked all together and all the same for it. So <laughs> that was a good, that was a side story about that uh, going on, which we went back and forth for. And it was part of the thing I liked about most of it is seeing that connection with uh, the new Asgard, seeing how much the new Asgard with the Asgardians on Earth are going into society. Which from this from this uh, court case, it made me think it makes more sense having this superhero law firm because you're going to get more moments like this you know with superheroes and villains on the rise you're going to get more of this because you remember the same thing i always think back is vision saying to the everyone remember so much has caused conflict and so much has happened since 2008 when iron man said when tony stark said i'm iron man yes as we do know, previously there was still a lot going on between Captain Marvel and Captain America. However, since then, all this is occurring. There is heroes coming out left, right, and center. Look at Moon Knight. Look at Miss Marvel. Uh, look at everything that happened with Miss Marvel and the the veil. Yeah, I still I still don't get that. But uh, yeah, this episode re re definitely made me think. Okay, yeah, you would need a superhero law form in this world, and She Hulk would be the very best person to do this. Uh, as we're going to see moving forward. Now, we didn't get to see Daredevil. I get that out of the way. However, I'm like, I'm so ready. I've seen the promo art for it. Interesting enough, the promo art, which I didn't notice the first time, is that when Daredevil sees She-Hulk in the scene, there's this massive flip. She-Hulk's actually wearing her comic book accurate outfit. Uh, we get to see that in later episodes. So she's actually wearing the purple and the white 
outfit. You see that later on in a few episodes. But this episode kept with uh, the content, kept with the quality. We finally got to see Wong, which even uh, even uh, she hulk said that she's like, oh, you know, uh, don't worry, you'll get to see Wong. Yeah, we all know we want to see Wong, which we finally did. Uh, fantastic. Bandic is, plays the character so well. I also love the fact that we found out that he is used to work at Target. So somehow he went from working at Target to working uh, in Taj Mahal, uh, t- yeah, Taj Mahal and being eventually the source of Supreme, which we found out why he was fighting Abomination in uh uh, in Shang Chi, which uh, funny enough to say, it's been one year anniversary since Shang Chi came out. How how scary is that? One year later, uh, and the fact that we're nearly at the end of Phase Four. Phase Four. That's so scary uh, because Shang Chi was very close to being the very first Marvel movie that, since Iron Man that I was going to miss not seeing in the theaters which lucky enough our theaters kept it going because we're in COVID lockdown one of the longest COVID lockdowns at the time uh we lucky enough that was still playing so got to see with my mates thank god so that was yeah that was really yeah it was really it was really lucky we got to see that it was with Mark and Dean so he explains the fact the reason why he did fight him was because it was a test for him to be a source of supreme. So that's why. Um, and then he agreed the fact that he would testify uh, for Abomination to make sure he didn't get into prison forever and the Pro Bowl Pro Board would accept him. So we saw a wall in a couple of scenes and he did make a reference to Spider-Man No Way Home and the Book of Ashanti. So showing and it makes me actually wonder. Uh, like, she hulk won't know who Spider-Man is. <laughs> so every time Spider-Man gets mentioned right now, actually, no, sorry, I lie. Everyone's going to know who knows Spider-Man is. No one remembers who Peter Parker is. Silly me. i got to remember that. Uh, but, yeah, it was good seeing Wong. Never, never a bad seeing Wong. He's basically Nick Fury for Phase 4. Going into it, it's not going to be the last time. I was going to be surprised if you saw Wong in Black Panther. Just for something. <laughs> Just for something. Uh, but as the episode progresses, at the very end, we do see she hulk going back to a car uh, in which she gets attacked by this construction crew that have all these enchanted items, which looks like to be a direct reference to the comic book, uh, comic book villain it's called the Wrecking Crew. There have been multiple versions of this crew, both on Earth and as in Asgard. As you can imagine, they look like a construction crew, but they've got enhanced uh, abilities and they've got enhanced equipment. And they attack She-Hulk. I do love the fact that she's she's walking to a car in a normal form and then she gets attacked and she's like, oh, that's right, and then goes, transforms into She-Hulk, which you do, get, you know, which you do see. And she attacks him. She completely beats him, wipes him out. However, one of them tried to... One of them tried to get a syringe into her to take out her blood, but could obviously couldn't get through the, her instructable skin. And then they, as they're running off, they go into the van and they say the fact they're going to have to tell the boss they couldn't get it. Uh, and they're going to have to try again a different way. This is a good drawback to episode one when uh, Bruce was saying, when he took uh, her blood, he destroyed it instantly, saying it can't fall into the wrong hands because we'll, you know, no one needs another Hulk. So someone's trying to take She-Hulk's blood, which makes me wonder, will it will happen? And then someone, obviously not uh, General Ross, Rai P, the actor, someone else will become Red Hulk for the Thunderbolts movie, in which, again, uh, rumor has it that Thunderbolts team will be led uh, by Elena. Black Widow's sister, apparently rumored she will be the leader of the team. We both know that US agent uh, uh, will be in it as well as Zemo. They are going to be all in it. And doesn't surprise me if She-Hulk, sorry, She-Hulk, Red Hulk will be in it. Because Thunderbolts, as you know, obviously was named after General Thunderbolt Ross. So it's going to be very... How that's going to proceed, how that team is going to come about, 
is going to be very interesting. And when we do see it, I am all up for this. A Suicide Squad Marvel team, take my money, led by Elena, bring it on. So, and that's how the episode ends. And and then you got the twerking video. So overall, to me, the quality is still there. It didn't dip. I was still laughing. I was still enjoying it. And not my point, they go, mm, yeah, I'm not, mm, I'm not hooked into this. Like Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel didn't grab me, I think, for the very first four episodes. I was like, I'm just watching this. I'm just watching this because it's Marvel. Uh, after the first four episodes, that's when I started getting more up being going, oh, all right, I'm going to start watching this movie more. However, She-Hulk, episode one, two, and three, uh, I'm all up for, which I said to myself, is it because she's got a direct correlation to an original Avenger and her story compared to Miss Marvel? However, however, how She-Hulk is being portrayed, the show, the writing, I'm really liking it. And I'm liking seeing this different aspect, kind of what we got in, in uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, showing the fact that, you know, will you know, the Avengers get paid? Do they get health insurance? Do they get pensions? All of this, you know, that's you know, showing all this other side, the kind of green of, greenness of the back end that you don't usually get to see. But you guys tell me, did you enjoy the She-Hulk? Did you enjoy the twerking? Please tell me. And I, oh, you're already born. Like, I don't give a shit. I'm just going to wait until the show fully comes out so please let me know in the comments so let's move on to our last review which is amazon prime's samaritan so this is starring uh sylvester stallone and javen walton uh, as sam as a little kid so this particular movie is an action movie adventure and it's about a villain and a hero called nemesis and called samaritan samaritan being the good guy this is obviously a comic book movie, and it's based on a comic, duh, <laughs> called The Samaritan. And what it's about is this hero, this icon called Samaritan, that disappeared about 25 years ago, fighting his brother at the top of a power plant where they both fought each other and they both apparently died. And the kid that we do get to see is called Sam. He's a big fan. And as the movie progresses, he gets in with the wrong crowd because he needs to get money uh, for his mum. And the setting, for, because she doesn't have enough money, it's just her and the uh, and Sam, the setting is showing it's very people homeless, the government's not doing anything, it's city suburbia, you know, showing that you know the people don't have jobs, people are just doing anything to... You know, snatched it a little bit because uh, a bad guy in this is called Cy uh, Cyprus. Oh, sorry, Cyrus, uh, who is doing all this back end mafia kind of stuff, and he wants to take over the city, and he wants to you know, become Nemesis, which was you know, which Nemesis stood for. All this anarchy, and the and the setting that's uh, setting is at the very start. They do an intro, a comic book style intro. Uh, showing the history between Samaritan and Nemesis. I really liked that. I thought, ooh, <laughs> I really liked that. I thought that just the visually outstanding, a great way to start a movie, gives a background, and then boom, let's go straight away. So that was really good to see. And as the story progresses, you get introduced to Sylvester Sloan's character, who is called Joe Smith, the most white name that you could get and pick from. Um, uh, who's just a garbage man, and Sam gets in with the wrong crowd. He gets beaten up. Joe sees him. Joe goes to help out and basically can punch and kick these people, kids, and they go flying, which makes Sam realize, oh, he must be the Samaritan. And as the story progresses, he keeps prodding him, pregnant him, and saying, you know, you're a Samaritan, you're a Samaritan, you know, getting all this backstory and everything. But we do see... So this is Sloan character, obviously doing the old man Logan. He's battle. He's worn. He doesn't want to fight anymore. He just wants to live a normal life. Also, when he uses his powers, it uh, heats up his body, so he needs to cool down. So he needs to have ice cream. He needs to get water to cool his body down, or his heart will click over because uh, you know just how old he is. So as again, as the story progresses, 
uh, Cyrus is able to find the old masks of Samaritan and Nemesis and this sledgehammer that was forged by Nemesis from the hate they have for his brother Samaritan. And he finds this and he does this very, very Bane speech saying, we give the city back to the people. Do whatever you want. You know, anarchy everywhere. That's that's the speech that he makes. Very inclined with Bane. Thought of it straight. I'm like, ah, oh, you're okay. Yeah, okay, we're going down that. We're going down that road. That's, yeah, that's that's the road we're going down. All right, makes sense. Uh, <laughs> uh, it does all that. C goes into slight chaos at the very start because he's got these grenades that, basically EMP that can wipe out electricity in a particular area. And then what he wants to do is he wants to do the same thing to what uh, Nemesis was going to do when he did the power plant and then wipe out the city, chaos, he's in control. Does it, does it all sound familiar? Does it all sound familiar to you? sounds familiar to me. Uh, <laughs> I was like, okay, this is very similar plot to a lot of movies, thinking of Dark Knight Rises. Um, and then what happens is, you know, uh, Samaritan, well, Joe, the, he, the kids he beats up, they come back, they run him over, and that's another way he find, uh, Sam finds out that Joe is Samaritan. And then again, the kids beat up Sam again, and they see Joe and realize that he's all healthy, so then they try and check attack joe he has to use his powers in public and then the word gets out that samaritan's back and it leads to uh cyprus taking sam and his mother which are a big showdown right at, the, at this factory which as you know how they would all go down however the biggest as i said earlier spoilers, the biggest plot twist that we do get in this that i loved i did not see coming so you see the you see the fact that, you know, uh, as the story goes on, you see Joe's having nightmares from that last night between him versus his brother Nemesis. I thought it was going to be the fact that he killed his brother to end the fighting, and he realized that, look, I'm just as bad as my brother. I'm just as evil. I'm done. I cannot be a good person anymore. Flip side of that, because... Uh, Cyrus keeps saying he's the good guy, but Sylvester Stallone character turns around and goes, you keep saying I'm the good guy, but I'm not. I'm the bad guy. So it goes to a flashback, and you see that Samaritan was about uh, starts falling down this, on this roof, and Nemesis tries to help him, but he slips, and Samaritan goes to falls to his death. Then Nemesis takes off his mask. It's Sylvester Stallone. So the whole time... It's yeah, you know, he wasn't Samaritan at all. It was Nemesis and that that plot twist, I was like, whoa. Okay. That props to that. I didn't see that coming. I was like, holy shit. That's actually really good. I was not expecting that at all. I was like, okay, that was a good twist. So it goes to a big fight, you see. Um also the CGI of a very young Sylvester Stallone really good love it look picture perfect all the cgi in this movie was solid the action in the movie very solid ah look it's look it, it it's not a movie you most likely will go back and watch again i'll straight i i'm not gonna watch this movie again it was this is a saturday night family viewing action kind of movie that you put on but you're not gonna watch again it's not too bloody. You know, there's a bit of action, but no, you could definitely watch it with your family. But it's not it's not a movie that you're going to go back. Like I, I found the plot to be obviously rinse and repeat altogether. Sylvester Stallone was good, as always, but you know, he didn't really do much. It sent a good it sent a good message. It also was a little bit different to the superhero movies you, you usually get, but at the end of it, I was like, oh, it was good. But I was like, nothing made in this, nothing in this movie made me, I want a sequel. I want to see more. I'm going to get this on DVD. I can't wait to watch it again. Or, you know, that was just, oh, I got to recommend to everybody. 
like the, I, I've just been, I've seen two people today, oh, sorry, yesterday, and I said that, you know, I recommend this if you want to watch it, but nothing, nothing like Prey. Prey was, whoa, you need to see this. This is if you've got the time and you want to watch it. Lucky enough, it's free on Amazon. So, yeah, it's, I just found the plot to be very rinse and repeat. Action scenes, there could have been more action into it. Uh, acting was all right. Nothing, whew, just that's great. Just found it very beat for beat. And some of the characters, I was like, I don't give a shit that you're going to die. Um, I was expecting a little bit more bloody, but it wasn't. So, at all, solid, but could have less for a desirable. More could have happened. You know, something more could have happened into it, but you're you're not going to want a sequel. You're not going to want to see more. This is very done and dusted. All right, next, let's move on. So nothing love lost there. So that is my review for Samaritan. So tell me, guys, are you enjoying She-Hulk at the moment? What did you think of Samaritan? Were you like, this is great, or you're like, this is a giant pile of shit? Please tell me if it's a giant pile of shit. And as always, guys, Please let me know in the comments, Instagram, TikTok, you know all the fun stuff. And I want to say thank you very much for tuning with this episode. Thank you for tuning in every single episode. You guys are the best fans in the world. It warms my heart. And until next time, happy ranting. Thanks for listening to Lights, Camera, Rant. If you like the show, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. While you're at it, leave us a rating and review, and be sure to tell your friends. Until